Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Bastards YouTube show. You have myself. I am Nick. We also have Vic here tonight to discuss a pantsing of the Boston Red Sox tonight on both a pitching front, offensive front, and fielding fr uh, front. You got the trifecta tonight of embarrassing, pitiful Red Sox baseball, Vic, and just my overall thoughts on this. I'm going to let everybody know here on the show here right now. I could not watch another ounce of this game after the fifth inning. I don't know how I lasted till the fifth inning, but I tried to be loyal. I tried to be dedicated. There's some people out there, friends and other people that think I'm negative. I don't love the team. Why the heck am I rooting for them? I am rooting for them. I love the Red Sox. Blood, sweat, and tears. I'm a Boston Red Sox fan. It angers me and it embarrasses me to see a product that is put on this baseball field where fans are supposed to root and cheer and sing Sweet Caroline and do all that nonsense. They sung that tonight, too. Just let that sink in. And we're left here trying to say that this is okay. This is all good. It's all good. It's okay, Vic. We're 40 and 40 now. Every, the sky it, it, it's, it, the sky hasn't fallen yet. The team is, oh, they'll be fine. Don't worry about it. They'll get it back tomorrow. I can't tell you that as a fan of this team, that this team is going somewhere. I cannot do that. So officially tonight, I'm very soon to do it, and I don't want to have to do it. But from that product that I just saw there tonight, Vic, the towel has been thrown. The towel has been thrown. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how you feel? Let's, this is just uh, a let's tough. Go. This is just a tough watch, uh, and I think that's what's frustrating, right? About being a fan who is so invested, where you know we 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 let games like this ruin our nights, and and mm -hmm. and we're bothered by it the next morning until the next game, and and still we get suckered into watching every game. It's it's just a this game is a microcosm of, and I think the last three games, or you can even say the last week, is a microcosm of the Red Sox season thus far. Uh, being able to dominate certain teams, things are looking up. You start looking on the bright side. You start thinking about, oh, how are we gonna, what, how, what are we gonna be looking like when everyone's back healthy? We're waiting on story. Let's just stay afloat, get the pitching healthy, and then they just completely drop these clunker of series and games against teams that they have no right losing to. And I understand the Marlins are, you know, having a great, having a great season by their standards thus far. Coming out there with Whitlock and just getting embarrassed like that today. I mean, that was uncompetitive. We were we were done from the first from the inning, start. essentially. You just you had that feeling that this was not going to be one of those comeback games. It's disheartening. And, you know, uh, we spoke about this briefly right before we uh, went live here. It's you don't want to throw the towel in, but this team. I don't. Every, I'll tell you that right now. I don't. And we don't. Neither of us want to. Right. Because we are fans and we don't want to be negative. We would love to be able to sit here and talk about you know, how great the game went or how great the season's going. And there's no reason for even after a six game win streak, like we just had last week, there is not a single bit of positivity remaining from that streak. There isn't the six game tease. That's what I'm going to call it. The six game it's not tease. the first time it feels like that's happened. I know we had let's, that win streak. Let, of, let's, I think put, of let's raise the banner. Let's get that trophy. <laughs> we swept the Yankees. Woohoo. It's it's embarrassing. It's, this is embarrassing right now. We got to come down to earth, fans. Some of you, it's it's sad. But I do want to ask first that our first and foremost thing here. We saw Garrett Whitlock through four yeah. and two thirds, six earned runs given up. You see the title right here. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say. Yeah. I've been preaching this since the beginning. What's your take, Garrett Whitlock? Is he a starter or is he a reliever? I loved him as a reliever in the beginning. I hated the way that the Red Sox really just, you know, flew these guys back and forth between him and Houck, between Penn starter, Penn starter. I hated it last year. I understand wanting to see what you have out of them uh, as starters this year, especially since, you know, we, we are lacking that depth with some of those injuries. Again, I think, I think Whitlock's season is representative of just the Red Sox season as a whole. It's, it's some glimpses of just, hey, you know what, maybe this guy can do it followed up by just some absolutely brutal starts. Right. And since he came back from the IL, he has been uh, I mean let's let's put not it the on. same picture. He, he has not, not the been the same. same. He has nope. not been the same. And last start, I think he had to completely abandon the slider because it yep. was getting crushed. Today, you saw after the first inning, he gave up on the changeup. 
He started throwing it again in the first. I started throwing it again in the fourth, excuse me. And I mean, you saw what happened there again. So time. it's, it's really disheartening. It's, it's, it's worrisome, it, right? Because I mean, we always knew we had the change up. That's supposed to be his most, his best pitch. Yep. And I mean, if that thing's getting, getting hit like that, then it's the, the pen, no I guess. I, I hope this is not some Daniel, a Daniel Bard situation. I hope it's not either. So I put up a stat tonight that I did a little research because I was really curious, okay. like, what's it going to be? What's his what's his stat line when he's a starter versus when he's a reliever? And my worst nightmare came true because I had a feeling it was very significant. So listen up to this. As okay. a starting pitcher, Whitlock has a, this is different after tonight, 4.72 ERA in 89.2 innings pitch. As a relief pitcher, Whitlock has a 2.24 ERA in 112.2 innings pitched. And I got fans and people that want to those the lovely keyboard warriors of the world that want to put you know pick a fight with me right now about oh, you know it's one start, oh, he'll be fine, yada yada. You're seeing it in black and white. It's a numbers game. I'm not trying to tell you I'm a know-it-all because I'm not. I'm not trying to come off at that. I am trying to say these are the stats that he has put up versus a st- as a starter as and then as versus a relief pitcher. There's 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 no debate anymore. I don't want to see any more of a sample size because I don't want to see another Daniel Bard situation arise again. I care too much about this guy and his future to see him get ruined and, and be a shell of himself. We know where he fits this team best. In my eyes, the problem right now is that you, you lovely baseball ops guys, Heim Bloom, Halloran, all of them, I'm going to blame them all. This is the product that you put on the baseball field, and you force Garrett Whitlock into this situation, and this is what this is what we got. We don't have anything else. We don't. We don't even have a freaking starting pitcher tomorrow, Vic, to yep. start tomorrow. No, this is I mean, what you have to roll with. I, it's not I, acceptable. No, I agree. And I think a lot of this, this, you know, the determination behind wanting to have Whitlock work out as a starter uh, is kind of sprouts from that contract that was given to him. And I think the front office is looking at it like, you know, let's get the most value out of this contract as we can. And if we can get a starter for the money that we gave Whitlock when we locked him up, then it's a steal, right? It, it looks like a great contract as opposed to, it's not necessarily an overpay for a reliever, but obviously getting a starter who's coming out there every fifth day at that price. And if they're serviceable or good, should I say, um, it it looks, it looks entirely different, but no, I, I, those numbers are, I mean, not, I'm not shocked at all by those numbers. Whitlock is a dog in the pen, um, much less dependable thus far in his career out of, um, the rotation. I, I don't know which way I can't, I actually cannot predict or tell you how this is going to end up for him, whether it's the end of this year. Right. I don't see him moving out of the rotation this year at all. You know I just don't I'm see that. About? I'm scared about him getting hurt again. And that injury yeah. is going oh. to become a season ender. And then yeah. we're really doomed. Okay. No. That's the concern for me here on why I would shift right ahead to the bull, to the bullpen. Now that's one of the things we like to keep our shows 10 under 10 minutes. So I just want to make sure we cover tomorrow's problems. We already know it's a ghost starter tomorrow. It's probably Chris Murphy. It could be Nick Pavetta. Who knows? What I am going to tell you is I am not feeling confident about this one tomorrow night because you've got Braxton Garrett going for Miami, who's been nothing but a stud specifically this month of June. His numbers are two and oh with a two thirty one ERA. He's thrown 23 innings. He's only given up six runs this this whole month, and he struck out 36 people so far. I don't know if I show up to the ballpark tomorrow if I'm a Red Sox. I don't know how you feel. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not looking good, right? This, to me, stinks of another series loss coming up here. It's yep. just, again, not being able to take care of business against the teams. When you look at the schedule, you are potentially feeling optimistic about. I don't love it, especially with a spot start there. Um, I mean, when we don't hit, we don't hit. At well, we all. don't. Yeah, we don't. you know, and it's and that's we the don't. thing. There's the to be whole no, kit and caboodle. There's no middle ground here. It's either eight runs a game, or it's two, so or less. Um, yeah, not feeling great about it. I'm, I'd be, I'd be surprised if we won this game. Well, we'll have to see what happens tomorrow. 
we'll try our best to stay optimistic. Yep. Who knows? Maybe we catch lightning in a bottle, hell freezes over or something, and something good <laughs> happens at Fenway Park for tomorrow night. So, Vic, I want to thank you for joining us here for uh, this game tonight. Uh, and we look forward to um, chatting with you again after uh, your little vacation, uh, your big vacation that you take. So, Absolutely. Um, I appreciate it. We will it. see you soon and have a good night, everybody.